2023 has a lot of heat dropping, but you want to know what's going to make you some cold hard cash this year. Starting off at number one will be the Jordan 1 High Reimagined Black Toe. As of right now, there is no set release date for these, but I do know they will come out sometime this year. These will be the third Jordan in the Reimagined line following the Jordan 3s and the Lost and Found 1. This pair will more than likely have the same effect as the Lost and Founds with the cracked leather as well as the aged midsole and tongue look. I expect these to sell out pretty well since we have not seen a Black Toe Jordan 1 since 2016. Prices for these, I'm guessing, is going to be around that 350 to 400 range before release, probably dropping down closer to 300 when they do come to release date. But who knows? That's just my prediction for right now. Next on my list will be the Jordan 3 Reimagines, which I covered right here. These are set to release March 11 for $210 retail, and these are the reimagining of the White Cement 3s with the aged midsole and a back tail. These are very much a top contender for sneaker of the year, but I will leave it up to you guys. Resale on these is expected to be high, even with the high estimated stock numbers right now early market is looking anywhere from five to six hundred dollars but closer to release date this will likely fall to around the 350 to 400 range which is still pretty good profit margins when you're looking at it next on my list we have the travis scott one low olive releasing march 25th for 150 dollars this sneaker features a black suede base with sail leather overlays with the olive color swoosh these are a women's only release so for us bigfoot kings we're just gonna have to miss out on these nevertheless reselling these will probably be high seeing that these are the last Jordan ones that Travis Scott and Nike will collaborate on as of right now at least but because this is a women's only release I don't see numbers to be as high as the other Jordan one Travis Scott oh so I'm gonna say that they're gonna be around that 450 to 500 dollar range for bigger sizes and closer to around 350 to 400 for the smaller sizes next on my list will be the Thunder Fours, which we have not seen since 2006 they are releasing May 13th for $210 retail the Thunder Fours come with a black new buck upper with yellow detailing on the midsoles and side panels and wing tip eyelids. This will definitely be a contender for sneaker of the year. My prediction is that they will resell for four to five hundred dollars when early pairs first get into the public's hands, but closer to release date, they will probably drop down to that 350 range. But these are still really good profit margins nonetheless. Fifth on my list will be the Panda One Highs cut in the 85 look. These are dropping in February for two hundred dollars, and this is basically just taking the Panda Ducks and turning them into a Jordan One. These will come with a black and white all leather upper and has a color scheme that will be very desirable when they drop. Even though people are tired of seeing the Panda Dunks, they still sell out wherever they are, no matter how many times they restock, no matter how many times they're pushed out by Nike. Even with the high $200 price tag for these shoes, I can see big sizes going for around that $300 range, with smaller sizes reaching that $240 to $250. So pretty good lunch money on smaller pairs, and you might get a little bit more change on bigger sizes, but there is still profit to be made. This is a sneaker by far that everybody's going to want to get their hands on, or simply just wouldn't mind it falling into their lap. Next on my list will be the Jordan 12 Alma Meneers, but not the black ones, but specifically the white ones. Not to say that the black ones aren't good, but if we're looking at just strictly profit margins, I say that the white ones take the cake for this one. Releasing March 2nd for a retail price of $225, these will be the first 12s in a long time that will turn any type of profit. These come in with a premium suede and a premium leather with red and white exteriors with a very classy look that I would not mind personally getting myself. But bigger sizes is where you need to put your money into these if you're looking to turn a profit being able to sell around that 280 to 300 range smaller sizes are probably going to be closer to retail next on my list will be the spider-verse jordan ones now i'm a little biased because i kind of want these for myself i'm just been a big spider-man fan since i was little i do think these are going to do better numbers than i've seen people talk about a lot of people say that these are going to be bricks and they're not going to move but i feel like that's going to be entirely the opposite of what's going to happen these released may 20th for 200 with a variety of tones and shapes in a chicago colorway these look very different different from anything that we have seen and some people might even say it's ugly but I feel like there's a storytelling pattern to this whole thing and that these take after the movie that's going to be dropping sometime this year and judging from the first Spider-Man shoe that dropped in 2016 there will be little to no restocks if any at all so I feel like these will be very rare to get your hands on and very rare to find later on in the year I feel like these will hit pretty good profit margins not even two months after release because a lot of people are not going to see these very often next releasing on July 8th for 100 $80 retail. We have the Jordan 1 University Blue. These come with the UNC toe box and heel with black contrast around the forefoot and along the tongue and collar. I expect these to be on a lot of people's lists with the potential to make a little bit more than lunch money. I don't see these going as much as the first University Blue one since those dropped in a time when the sneaker resale market was at its peak. But I do see these hitting the 250 to 280 range. I even reach 300 in some big sizes. This is definitely not a sneaker to sleep on and one that will have a lot of demand to it. Last 
last on my list will be the Jordan 1 Low Black Toe. Releasing July 8th, these take inspiration from the highs of the same name. These will drop for $140 and will be sought after immediately. Jordan 1 Lows don't typically have huge resale value, but when it comes to clean colorways like this one, it's a no-brainer that these will sell out. I see prices for these hitting the 200 to 220 range without question, as the Black Toe Jordan 1s is a fan favorite amongst a lot of people. And especially with the hype of the reimagined pairs coming out this year as well, this will be a great alternative for people who was not able to get their hands on that pair that they really wanted. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I want you to comment 2023 down below. Also, let me know what type of content you guys want to see from me this year. I plan on making bigger and better things and hopefully growing this channel over a thousand subscribers very soon. And with that being said, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.